morning to all of us, men of God. You know, it's my privilege to be here to speak to you as my fellow men. Because uh, in the eyes of history, men have always been the heroes of the next generation. So can you please turn to the person beside you and just say, you are the hero of the next generation. We tend to look at ourselves most of the time only as individuals. But in the eyes of our Creator, He looks at every man generationally. In every man, God sees the future generations being prepared in your life. We carry within ourselves as men the seeds of the kind of character and values that generations to come will be influenced with. And that is why this morning I challenge you to see yourself that way. You are more than just an individual. You are an influencer of the next generation and generations to come. I'm sure all of you know uh, Kiko Pangilinan, right? And of course, Anthony Pangilinan. They have a brother who is not very well known in the world of celebrities because he is a businessman. His name is Joseph Pangilinan. Joseph Pangilinan was the first Filipino to receive a very prestigious international award in 1995 which is called the World Young Achievers Award. This was awarded in London, England. And many believe the reason why he won the award is because of an answer to an interview question that was asked from him. And this was the interview question. Mr. Pagalina, you are a very successful businessman at such a young age. We would like to know, how are you able to balance your time between your business and your family? He was then the president of Manila Pearl Company, a furniture company in Manila. And so to that question, Joseph Pangilinan gave a reply without hesitation. He said, no amount of success in business can compensate for failure in the home. For some seconds, the audience was silent and then it was followed by an uproar of applause. That night, he was granted the World Young Business Achievers Award. One of the judges who sat that night went after him at the backstage to shake his hand personally. And when he shook Joseph's hand, he said, If I only knew the principle that you shared in the interview many years ago, I would never have lost my family. I congratulate you. You know where you stand. As men, we struggle with so many things in our lives. We struggle with temptation. We struggle with our hunger for significance. And because of not many times we are successful, we struggle a lot with failure. In fact, today there are so many men in our society, and that includes all of us here, who are going through our own woundedness in many areas of our life. Many of us are struggling with our marriage. And sometimes we ask, how do I deal with a domineering wife? I don't know if that is your problem. Okay? How do I deal with a son who is now a drug addict? How do I deal with a son who has become a homosexual? How do I deal with my financial problems? And many times we get discouraged. And in our moments of discouragement, the door is open to many ways of finding an outlet. And that is where temptation strikes the strongest. We are too sensitive to failure as men. But this morning, we will begin to understand what is it that was built into us that because of wrong concepts about manhood in our culture, those potentials that was built into our lives are not being fully realized so that we become the kind of men who are able to make a difference 
in our homes, in the way in our business community, in our school, in our community. God has put in us tremendous potentials to advance society and civilization in fulfillment of God's purpose for human life. Let me share with you a short story about an eaglet. The story is told that in the U.S., Colorado Springs, this is not a true story, it's fiction, but it is spoken in order to illustrate an important truth. The story starts with a nest of eagle's eggs in a very high place. And then one day, strong winds in the place shook the tree where it was nested, and then one of the eggs lost balance and began to fall. Many meters, many meters down the tree, cushioned by the branches of the trees, and finally it landed on the ground, still intact. Started to roll, and finally find its place in a pile of chicken eggs. Okay. And of course, a time, the time came when the egg started to hatch. The egg, the eaglet egg was just bigger than the chicken eggs. And so when they all hatch, the eaglet thought that the mother hen was its mom. And it began to follow the behavior of the other chicken. And so it began to walk like a chicken, sound like a chicken, and eat like a chicken. And there was a time when he began to notice that his wings are bigger than those of his siblings. And so one day he started to experiment with his wings. And then when the mother hen saw what this uh, thought son was doing, he said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to fly. And the mother hen said, my dear son, chicken don't fly. Yes, they fly like this and then whoop, but they don't fly. Okay? And so this uh, eaglet said, oh, I'm just chicken. And then one day while they were looking for food in the field, this little eaglet looked up and was just awed by a big bird that he saw flying very high in the sky. And he was just... Uh, amazed that this big bird can soar in the sky without flapping its wings. And so it was so, you know, amazed by this bird. Every day he would go there just to watch this bird in the sky. And then one day this bird started to spiral downwards. And uh, soon enough the eaglet realized that this big bird was going in his direction. And so he realized, I'm in trouble. And so he started to run like a chicken. But the big bird was able to land ahead of him in front of his tracks and stop him. And so this little eaglet said, please don't eat me. I'm just a chicken. And this big bird said, no, you're not. You are my son. I've been looking for you. You are my son. No, I'm not your son. I'm just chicken. You're something else. No, you are not chicken. You are an eagle. And I said, the, 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 the eagle said, no, that's impossible. That's impossible. Mama said, chicken don't fly. Chicken don't fly. And then the big bird said, spread your wings. And instinctively, this eaglet started to spread its wings because it has been longing to do that for a long time. I want you to flap your wings so hard. He said, sorry, I'm chicken. Chicken don't fly. Stop talking and just follow what I'm saying. And so started to flap hard and then it started to mount. And then the eagle started to say, follow me. Started to yeah, flap yeah, higher. And then it began to realize I'm flying. <laughs> and by the time they were high in the sky, the, the big eagle said, I want you to steady your wings and don't move. And he did it, and he started to soar. And it dawned on him the biggest discovery of his life when he said, I am an eagle. I am an eagle. 
And in the following weeks, he was able to unleash the full potential of his nature and soon became master of the skies. You like that story? Yes. That is your story as a man. We have been made to believe that we cannot accomplish much because the kind of upbringing we experience in the Filipino family sometimes is not very encouraging, right? When we were still young boys, we were made to believe sometimes that we are hard-headed or sometimes you're good for nothing or sometimes you're made to believe that once you make a mistake, I mean, you're done for, right? We love our parents, amen? But they all can also be wrong at times, right? And we began to think that maybe I cannot do this. Experiences of failure in the past sometimes may make us believe that just because I failed, I can never do this. I can never be this kind of person because I failed. How many of you have experienced failure that made you believe you just can't do it? Can you raise your hands, please? Okay. Now look around. You'll notice that's almost everybody. That is one thing we have, we share in common as men, right? That's why you're in the right place this morning. Because everybody around you can understand you as a man. Because all of us have common struggles, issues, and hurts, and disappointments as men, right? But this day, we want to discover who we really are. From the point of view of the creator of humanity. Only the one who made us knows what we were designed for. Only our maker can define what we are because he knows what he put into us. Are you excited to know who you really are? Amen. Amen? Can you say to the person beside you, I am an eagle that is just about to be discovered. Okay. Now let's turn to our discussion this morning. What is a man? As Filipinos, we have been reared up in a concept of manhood that has proven to be damaging to our culture. And I'm talking about the popular version of the machismo ideal. Right? Macho. Right? Pakisabing ako'y macho. Nurin. <laughs> Macho Nurin. Three centuries of Spanish influence in our history has somehow conditioned our understanding of manhood in a way that was not intended by the original machismo ideal. And let me share this with you. You know, machismo, sorry as practiced by the upper classes in Spanish, Latin American, and Mexican cultures, embodies the noble virtues of integrity. That's why we have the saying in, in Spanish, in our language, palabra de honor. Okay, right? You remember that? Palabra de honor. That's Spanish influence, and it's a positive influence in our culture. Also, love for family. It's a good reinforcement of our pre-Hispanic culture where love for family has always been part of our culture, expressed in the man's role as the provider and protector of his family in the face of all odds. We will never allow anyone to step on our family and our family honor. That is the Spanish influence, which is the machismo as practiced by the upper classes. He's the protector of the family in the face of all odds and on, and on the duty of a macho to train and discipline his children to be morally upright, courteous, honest, and hardworking. I don't know if you can still remember, and maybe I can ask those who are senior citizens among us today, do you remember these values in the past? Yes, yes we still remember at least palabra di anon or word of honor, we remember delicadeza or social propriety where you are not supposed to behave or do anything in public that may put your name and your family to embarrassment. Okay? And we have the terms amor proprio or self-love 
by which you maintain your good reputation by being a man of your word and by learning to practice delicadeza in your connections or relationships with people, right? Those were the noble values of machismo as it originated from the Spanish, Latin American, and Mexican cultures. But we have a problem. The problem is that the popular or street version of this male ideal, as generally now practiced in our culture, focuses on an exaggerated display of masculinity and virility expressed in male aggression and alcoholism and domestic and sexual domination of females. This is the negative side of the machismo ideal that became very popular in our Filipino culture. You see, macho is somebody who will never allow anybody to hurt his ego without getting a knockout. And if you, if you fail to defend your bruised ego, you are called a bayot or bakla. You remember that? I was still a student. I was bullied from elementary to high school. How many of you were bullied before? Thank God I'm not alone. I was bullied from elementary to high school. And I did not have the guts to fight for myself. I just allowed them to hit me and hit me, kick me, you know, make me a punching bag, you know, of their karate lessons. Why? Because I had such a low view of myself because I grew up in a family where I was all cursed almost every day by one of my parents. And so I had little appreciation for myself as a man. Okay? And so, but a time came in high school that I had had enough. In fact, I was elementary. I was a LaSalle student then. And in LaSalle, this bully will always be there every afternoon to watch for me. But one day, I had enough, I was so angry, and I started attacking him and hit him so strong that he fell on the ground and broke his jaw. He was rushed to the hospital, and uh, my family and my parents had to apologize to the parents of my classmate, and later on, I had to apologize for my classmate because of what I did. But did I tell them that your son has been bullying me all the time? I didn't say that. Because they won't believe me anyway. That's a problem when you're bullied, right? When I was in high school, I had the same experience. I was bullied and one day I was so enraged. Enough is enough. I went up and started hitting him so hard. He couldn't stand up from the ground. And then later on, he avoided me like a virus. Many of us struggle with our longing to be recognized, right? For who we are. But machismo teaches us you have to fight for your ego or you're not a man. Even sometimes sacrificing uh, personal safety and the security of your family. There is a difference between courage and recklessness. There is a thin line that divides real courage and recklessness. You don't always have to defend your hurt ego when you know it will only bring further damage to you and even to your family or even to your reputation. But that is what machismo makes us to believe. If I don't fight back, I am bayot. I am bakla, I am a homosexual, okay? And also, if you remember that as men, you know, we should always exude, you know, an image that we are strong. That's why men don't weep, right? We're not supposed to cry. And some of you have grown up in families when you cry, your dad says, men, don't cry, don't you cry. How many of you experienced that? Bawal umiyak pagladati. Okay. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, according to that understanding, must be less than a man because at the tomb of Lazarus, he wept out of compassion. You understand that? Real men know where to shed tears 
when it comes to compassion for other people. The other side is, what does machismo? And machismo teaches us you should not be forgiving. No forgiveness. No mercy. Again, that's machismo. Okay? And machismo also tends to display itself by being, you know, a, a man who drinks the inuman, anume, ng tunay na lalaki, okay? I'm not making a, a scene for the beer companies here. But I'm saying that that is quite not the best measurement of our manhood. Because of the damage that brings our health and also to our family and marriage relationships, right? Okay? But that is part of machismo, right? And as machos, we are made to believe that you prove you're a man by how many women you impregnate. The more women, the more macho you are. And so, there will always be a struggle with marital fidelity. We are often made to believe that men are by nature polygamous. That's a machismo idea. Okay? How many of you believe in that? We are by nature polygamous. Okay? These are the things we grew up with. And I cannot blame any person who grew up with that idea because we had no alternative understanding or concept of what it means to be a man. Did, our, did my father teach me what it means to be a real man? No, he was too busy with his job. Right? And who taught us that being, you know, uh, sexually active is what makes you a man? Where do we get that? Barcada and also, of course, society through the media, especially the movie industry, right? Okay. But are these accurate concepts of real manhood or are these concepts that simply are portrayed by the media and advertising agent, advertising industry in order to get a lot of money from us? The important thing is this, what it means to be a man. 